What's up, YouTube? This is uh, Big Mike, and um, in this video, I want to talk a little bit about what Kevin Durant said. Um, I think he was saying in an interview recently that whenever he has friends over, family, that being the basketball junkie that he is, that he looks at, uh, he, he's he's uh, like obsessed with looking at Michael Jordan highlights. And he uh, talked about how he doesn't understand how people aren't more, or how everyone, I should say, is not totally enamored by looking at uh, video footage and highlight reels of Kobe Bryant, uh, Michael Jordan, uh, and to a lesser extent, Kyrie Irving. And he was talking about how just the fluidity, fluidity, excuse me, and how they play is just totally on another level compared to uh, everyone else. And, um, you know, I, I, this, this is just my opinion, okay? Doesn't mean I'm right. I could very well be wrong. I probably am wrong, okay? I look at what Kevin Durant first said. Okay, the first statement he said about LeBron James fanboys in the media. I don't think, in my opinion, and, and, and this is just me, I honestly don't think that Kevin Durant was trying to sneak this LeBron with that one. I think he was being honest in that Sports media does have a lot of LeBron James ass kissers, sycophants, excuse makers. I think he's totally correct in that assumption. He even put it out there. This isn't an attack on LeBron at all. It has nothing to do with him. Um, it's not really about him. It's about the people in the media. However, the response that LeBron James had about Kevin Durant's <laughs> words, or you know, I looked at that as high level sneak dissing. It's easy to miss, but some things have have you know that that stuck out with me with LeBron James' response to Kevin Durant's earlier remarks is when he said that I'm a staple of this game, which I guess can be true, but it comes across to me as an extraordinarily arrogant thing to say, but he got a pass for saying that. But also when he said, I'm used to, he, I'm paraphrasing a lot, but he kind of said something like, I'm used to taking uh, you know, a heavy load. I can do whatever. I can do everything. Or I can, you know, not share the load and 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 rely on my teammates or, or something like that. He said something like that. Now, recall that Kevin Durant once said that one of the reasons he liked playing with Golden State Warriors is that it makes the game easier for him. It's not as hard as when he was playing with OKC. He was. I remember him talking consistently about how things are so much easier, how. Playing with all these great shooters opens up the floor for him, and things are just so much easier. So when I saw LeBron make those comments, I'm like, okay, I think he's kind of slightly sneak dissing, but it's real, you know, it's a very strategic, <laughs> it's a very strategic form of sneak dissing. Now, what Kevin Durant said this time to me was sneak. It's almost not even sneak dissing. I mean, come on. Everybody knows that right now the hot little debate topic is LeBron James versus Michael Jordan, right? That's just how that is. When Kobe Brown's playing, it was Kobe Brown versus Michael Jordan. It's really just a media created talking point, man, just to act, just to create buzz. Uh, talk amongst fans and uh, and increase ratings when, you know, amongst these talk, sh talk uh, sports shows. But the fact that he mentioned 
Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, and then Kyrie Irving, LeBron James' former teammate. And he talked about how fluid their games are. And one of the knocks on LeBron James is that, you know, his game isn't the most beautiful to watch at times offensively. You know, he's kind of a a charging bull who uses his size and, you know, uh, what quickness he has left to kind of just bull rush to the basket. You know what I mean? Um, he won't be, you know, LeBron James will never be confused with Allen Iverson. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, I kind of did look at that as a bit of a sneak diss, um, at LeBron James. I mean, especially the fact, like I said, he mentioned Kyrie Irving. As a matter of fact, he mentioned every fucking body except for LeBron James. He even talked about Stephen Curry and his teammates and shit. But the, but you don't mention LeBron James when you're talking about uh, people that are the GOATs in his eyes. He said the GOATs are, in his eyes, Kobe Bryant and, and Michael Jordan. You know, you know it's it's an interesting uh, topic. Um, you know, I definitely think that, like I said, that uh, Kevin Durant would sneak this and LeBron James. And I don't really understand at this point. At this point, if you're if you're Mine is that singularly focused on LeBron James. There, there has to be some level of envy there. It has to be some level of envy. Um, I don't quite get it because you've been beating LeBron James in the finals two straight years. I think that's what it is. You know, now I think about it, I do kind of get it. Kevin Durant wants the adulation that LeBron James gets. I think that's what's sticking in his craw like you know a lot of people still feel like Kevin Durant took the easy way easy way out going to Golden State right a lot of people still feel that way um even though he's won two consecutive NBA championships two consecutive NBA finals MVPs a lot of people including myself I'm not gonna lie kind of felt like well, you're supposed to win. I mean, your team's that loaded. You're supposed to win the championship. You know, like when they won, I, I felt nothing inside. You know, like, okay, that's what you guys are supposed to do. That's how I felt inside. Even with Shaq and Kobe and them, I'm not a Laker fan, but I felt, you know, satisfaction in looking at it, especially the first time Shaq won his title in 2000. I felt some satisfaction for him. Even Kobe, as much as I disliked him, in 2009, when I was playing against Orlando, I kind of was happy that he was able to get that monkey off his back and was able to win a title without Shaq. You know, uh, 2010, I was definitely rooting against LeBron, uh, excuse me, Kobe in that scenario. I was rooting for, for Boston hardcore. Um, but Kevin Durant has, you know, won two... NBA championships, two final MVPs, but yet the media is still talking about LeBron. 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 And that has to get on his nerves. He's probably wondering, why are they not talking about me? Why are they not talking about me? And see, this is why I said, and, you know, just my opinion, okay? People don't have to agree with my opinion. And a lot of people will not agree with this. That's why I looked at the, this was the downside of Kevin Durant joining the Warriors. Because a lot of people are going to feel like, even though you guys have won championships, that these championships, especially considering Durant, as the fact that he is seen as sort of like an add-on, it doesn't have the same value 
as, let's say, LeBron winning his championship with Cleveland in 2016, or uh, the Detroit Pistons beating the Lakers in 2004, or Miami coming back from 2 nothing against Dallas and winning in 2006. A championship on, a, on face value is equal. They're all equal on face, you know, on face value. But when you go deeper into things, you look at the situations, some NBA championships are valued more than others. That's just how that is. You know, uh, I'm pretty sure, even though many people consider 96 Bulls the best team, at least of that generation, the 7-2 win Bulls in 96, I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure, even though Michael Jordan might not admit this, he got a lot, a lot more satisfaction or a lot of satisfaction out of winning those championships in 93 and 98 when the odds didn't even favor them those times. You know what I mean? Um, Bulls didn't have home court advantage in neither one of those series. Phoenix was favored, if I'm not mistaken, to win in 93. The Bulls bench was depleted. They were kind of old, and they were relying incredibly on Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen. Um, Michael Jordan uh, went from averaging... Matter of fact, if it wasn't for a scoring barrage in the months, like the last month of the season, in 91-92, Jordan would have finished below 30 points per game. Uh, he, had, he finished with 30.1, but at one point he was scoring averages down at like 29.4 or something like that. Next season, he averaged almost 33 points a game because the team's offense was just so depleted. 98, the same thing. Um, even though... Uh, his scoring average went down from 29.6 to 28.7. The Bulls' total offense went down from 105 points in 96 to 103 points in 97 to only 96 points in 98. They were not the same team. So they relied a lot on Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen when he came back. Um, but that's why I think those championships mean a lot to those guys. You know what I'm saying? Um, I know, you know, a lot of guys have won championships that seem more hard fought um, and they relish them more and they're appreciated more. And that's my basic point with that. You know, I think Kevin Durant has some jealousy toward LeBron James. 